Hey everybody, how are you? Uh, today has special meaning to me, so I wanted to throw a video up on the page. Um, it is currently April 25th, 2019. Uh, I woke up this morning and realized that it was the 10 year anniversary of the very first uh, fundraiser that I ever organized. Now that's not to say I organized on my own. I had a crew of friends with me that helped me. But when <clears throat> when you're somebody like me who is, you know, somebody who has medical special needs, you tend to get tossed into the mix of <clears throat> various different causes and fundraisers and this, that, and the other. And so you get a general idea of what the philanthropic nonprofit world is all about. Um, you know, I think naturally because of the fact that I am, you know, a special needs individual, um, I think I was kind of destined to do something with philanthropy. Um, today's also Thursday, which meant that we originally were going to record a podcast episode for our Discussions with the Devil podcast that myself and two other friends are doing. Um, unfortunately, things didn't line up and we kind of had to wait until tomorrow. But that's fine. Um, but, I don't know, I just wanted to talk about what philanthropy means to me. And you, along the lines of trying to, you know, understand humans and trying to reestablish conversation and communication, I began to look back at, you know, my efforts in the early days of organizing the first fundraiser, which it was for child abuse awareness because April is child abuse awareness month. Um, and it really, I think that was really the start of me figuring out how different people were. Um, having a small group of people that were just a bunch of individuals. We weren't connected with any, you know, big organization that was helping us. It was just us. Uh, I've, you know, tried to rally <clears throat> all of the close people that I had in my life to get them interested and try and get them to help. I was talking to one of the other podcast hosts and we were because he was involved in the original fundraiser and I was telling him how when before we brought him on myself and two other organizers were going around to different people trying to drum up support and what have you and I had told him a story about when I went into a local restaurant that was in the town I grew up in and a girl that I had gone to school with was working there. And I was telling her, you know, about what we were doing. And all of a sudden, she came back with me, or at me with a response that I never even imagined was possible. She looked at me and said, why are you pushing such a negative topic when it doesn't happen in our area? Now, this shocked me for one reason. Uh, like I said, it's been 10 years since we did this fundraiser, so it happened in 2009. I graduated in 2003, and I don't remember if we were still in school or if we had just gotten out of school, but one of the uh, kids that I went to school with ended up being arrested and charged and, uh, you know, subsequently convicted of child abuse. I won't go too much into it because YouTube is a pain in the butt when, you know, you talk about 
sensitive topics. But knowing that we had gone to school with somebody that was a convicted child abuser and knowing that it had been in the media so heavily, it just shocked me that this girl said, you know, why are you doing, why are you pushing a negative topic in an area where it doesn't happen? People being so naive is essentially why stuff like this still continues to happen because it doesn't happen close enough to them for them to take notice. Now, I'm not saying it should, but I'm saying that when you work on philanthropic projects, you start to understand people involved in that project. And you start to understand the people that you are reaching out to to help. And while we only ended up doing three of those fundraisers, I believe it was 2009, 2000. 11 and 2012, I think we skipped a year because one of our uh, development members had moved away. Um, but anyway, we really didn't get enough of a grasp of, you know, the right people to help us that were willing to continuously stay on the project and continue it. Um, which is fine, you know, I mean, I, I know that there are other efforts that are done, you know, in other places, so it's, it's fine. I really wish that we would have been able to grow the event that we were doing. But um, a couple days ago, well, I said a couple days ago, back on uh, April 17th, um, an alert came up in my Facebook about... Um, one of the other foot, uh, footprints events, we called the Footprints of the Future, uh, came up and reminded me that we had done it back in 2011 at a different location uh, than the first one. And it talked about, you know, some of the musicians and, you know, the music groups that we had performed at that particular event in 2011. So I reached out to both of them and found a picture of them performing. Uh, two specifically were from a band and their band couldn't perform so what they did, they didn't want to bail on me. What they did, they got together, it was the singer and the lead guitarist and they formed a, an acoustic duo to per specifically perform at this event and that meant the world to me that they didn't want to, you know, bail on me. So along with, you know, the people that were, you know, critical of what I was doing, there was a lot of people that were very supportive. You're going to find that in anything you do. Um, thankfully, I would say that most of the people were supportive. Um, but I look back at, you know, my history with doing philanthropy uh, or philanthropic endeavors, um, and I look at you know, what I hope to be able to do once I start being able to monetize my content on here uh, as far as developing the nonprofit summer camp. And, you know, I look back at the fact that it's been 10 years since I first did that, you know, very first fundraiser. And it's still something that I fondly look back on. Now, Back in 2009, at least in upstate New York, it was, I think it was one of the hottest days that we had experienced in a while. I think it was 95 the entire day, and we were in a, you know, a large uh, open field the entire day. So I think we looked like lobsters by the end of the day, all of us that were uh, at that event, whether it was staff or attendees. Um, one of the things that I was talking to one of my podcast hosts about was the fact that the uh, feedback that I got after the event was there was a lot of people that drove by the event, saw it, but didn't stop because they thought that because there were so few people there that it was a Boy Scout event. 
I think, I mean, it, it was disappointing to hear that. But I think that even now, in 2019, we need to have a little bit more self-awareness and we need to be aware of what's going on around us and have a little bit more curiosity because people that just kind of brush it off as a Boy Scout event without really knowing what it was, I really think it was, you know, detrimental to it because I really think that if people had, you know, been more curious and more willing to, you know, investigate, so to speak, I think that we could have drawn a larger crowd. Um, you know, I've looked at different, you know, fundraisers and stuff that I could probably do since I've gotten to Virginia and it just, the timing isn't right and, you know, my resources are a little bit limited down here, but I definitely plan to um, get back into that as soon as I can because it was something that I enjoyed doing. Um, just because it, I always value experiences over, you know, gaining something, you know, getting something physical out of it. Um, and that's what, to me, philanthropy is, is about, is just kind of doing something without expecting something in return. Um, a lot of what we dealt with when we were trying to get a, a group of staff together, there were a lot of times I heard, you know, I'll do it, but what's in it for me? And I, I have to wonder if that sentiment has changed uh, with anybody. Because I think that the more philanthropy that is common, I think more people will be connected to each other. And I think that the more we do something for somebody else without expecting something in return, we learn more about ourselves and we learn more about that, you know, that per person or group of people. Um, so mainly I just wanted to make a quick video, um, and kind of put this out there and to my staff that helped me out 10 years ago, uh, Krista Johnson, Monica Sailors, um, Ethan Wallet, uh, Jimmy Dow, you know, you guys were crucial in helping me and, you know, to the performers at the time. Uh, I believe we had uh, a group called State or uh, Street Talk. We had uh, a former boss of mine uh, from one of the local radio stations and his band, the Kings of Stupid Mountain. Um, you know, that, just to name a few, because I, I mean, it's been you know that long that I can't fully remember. But when you have people like that whether you stay in contact or you end up drifting apart, I think you can look back on something like that with some fondness. You can look back and have fond memories and realize that even if it wasn't to the level that you wanted it to be, it made enough of an impact that you know it changed either your life or somebody else's. So I think going forward, people should try and get themselves involved with more philanthropic endeavors and you know just be there for people and do what you can for somebody else without expecting something in return because at the end of the day you will get something in return and you'll start to learn more about yourself and i think that we need to work further toward learning more about ourselves to, you know, understand us, the world around us, and the people in it. So I hope everybody's doing well, and I will see everybody soon.